Hello everyone, welcome to Yoga Galactica lunchtime conversation live stream and some breathwork yoga and a little sound bath. My name is Kamala, this is Siri. Hello. And yeah, so we decided to change our format up a bit and have more of a conversation with you all about some of the things that have been changing our lives. A lot of these things we have gathered via podcast, and uh, whew, they are powerful. Um, before I get into it, what we're going to talk about today are the five most limiting beliefs that, that we have, and we usually get these beliefs when we are very young, the ages from one to five, possibly one to seven. Um, zero to five, zero to seven, and um, and I'm so excited to talk about these things because we all have those limiting beliefs. We talked about beliefs last night in yoga and the power of our words, and um, this is a great one for people that are parents. It's also great for those of us who have those beliefs and how we can kind of look at them and tenderly go in and work on them. So I, right now, I'm gonna share this on my page. It'll only take a second. And if you're watching it and can share this on any pages that you are on your page or any pages that you belong to, it will help us reach more people. And we love you. We're so excited to jump into this. I'll let Siri jump in for a sec while I share. <clears throat> and good morning, everybody, or shall I say good afternoon, or just good day, no matter when you're watching this, what time of day it is, we appreciate you tuning in for these transmissions. Um, this is part of our goal, part of our mission to really share as much with you, our tribe, our community, the global community, um, things that have shifted our lives because they're just so powerful and it's part of our service to share. So that way we can all uplift, we can shift our consciousness and really create this heaven on earth that we know, we all know is possible, yet somehow we seem to get stuck in what we call limiting beliefs. Uh, so before we jump into the topic today, just a few uh, notes about how to use this recording. Um, ideally, you'll set aside some time, about an hour, to work with this. Um, maybe for this first part you can listen or watch while you're driving, but ideally you're not going to be driving and you're in a distraction-free place. So um, give yourself this gift of um, taking the time out to give back to yourself in this fashion. Um, we are going to talk maybe 20-30 minutes and then probably do a little breath work, movement, and sound healing for the rest. So it's going to be about an hour. And if you can, please plug into some speakers, whether that's uh, via Bluetooth or um, your connecting cable, whatever it is, try to amplify the audio. That's really gonna be the best way to experience this. Um, like Kamala said, um, share, please, please share this on your page. And not just your page, but maybe share it in pages that you feel this will resonate with, whether it's a holistic page or a yoga page or anywhere that people are really trying to expand their consciousness. And of course, you can share it on pages uh, that aren't doing that, but really, you know, we're, we're talking to the people that are ready to hear this. Not everybody's going to be ready to hear this, and it's not going to hit everybody the same. In fact, it's probably going to uh, be received differently by each person that listens or watches this. And for the most part, you really just need to listen. Uh, watching it is an added bonus, but the audio is the most important part. So really try to plug in and amplify into some speakers. Um, if you can, leave a comment, let, let us know how this uh, resonated with you. And um, we love you guys, have an awesome transmission. Uh, remember that if you wanna join us for our classes here weekly, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday night doing our Yoga Galactica transmission. Uh, we're offering weekly combo sessions, which is a powerful medicine from the jungle, the Peruvian, and the whole Amazon rainforest. And uh, we're here to be of service to you guys. So we love you, have an awesome transmission, and I'll turn it back over to my lovely partner, Kamala. Hey, hey, hi, Soba. Hello. Um, yeah, so first of all, I just wanna let you know most of you do know, but those who 
don't know me. I'm not a parent, um, but I love children so much, and I've said this so many times in yoga, we are all responsible for the children of this world. We affect them, we are examples for them, and so this, uh, this podcast that I listened to today really blew my mind, um, and it talked about our five most limiting beliefs, and the woman that spoke about this, her name is Shelly Lefko. it's spelled L-E-F-K-O-E, and she has a beautiful system called Parenting the Lefko Way, and um, her talk really inspired me because I feel like whether we're parents or not, we're now humans who have parents, and we are all left with some of these beliefs that can really impact our lives and actually limit us from living our truest, most authentic self. And so I love being able to see these beliefs, look at them, and then go in and be able to work on them and, and really shift our lives so that we can live out loud and really be the beautiful bright lights that we all are meant to be on this planet. So um, I'm going to talk about the five most limiting beliefs um, and how they can affect us. So the number one most limiting belief is I am not good enough. And boy, this one leaves us with so much self-doubt in our lives that it's unbelievable. And this is one of the things that we talked about in our yoga class a couple Tuesdays ago, and I realized how much this one affected me in my life as I don't know my real father. And my dad, Dan, is unbelievable. But there was that, that missing link, which was this man named Louie, who I have never met. Um, I don't know him. And it always made me feel in so many ways that I am not good enough. And I'm looking at that one right now in so many ways and really like I've written it, I am enough on all of my mirrors. I'm, I'm saying it to myself every day and I'm really doing this work because it's so important to feel and know each one of you that you are enough. And Marissa Peer, an amazing woman, does some beautiful work on that, helps you dive in deep. Um, but I just, I'm gonna, go through all these five so we can hear them all and maybe there's one that you resonate with. Number two, most limiting belief is I am powerless. Whew, and that's a big one. <laughs> and when we get children that feel that they are powerless or when we feel we are powerless, we become complacent. Um, sorry, compliant, <laughs> not complacent. We become compliant or we become rebellious and even become bullies because we want to feel that power, right? We want, to, we want to know that we have power. So we actually start to bully people and push them so that we feel that we are in our power. Huh, I think that one is affecting so many children right now because I've spoken to my sister Hannah and many moms and, and I've heard that there is a lot of kids feeling are being bullies right now and we know that if you are some you know a young child it's because they're hurt or they're hurting they're feeling that they are powerless in their home so they're possibly going out and being bullies being rebellious um, and it, it it's really an epidemic right now so that's one that we really all should look at um, the number three most limiting belief is I am NOT important if you don't feel you're important, you're not asking for what you want. Um, and you're not speaking up for yourself because you don't feel that you have that power. And another one is um, you, you allow people to take, your, to take the spotlight. And oh, that is also a big one because we all need to know how important that we are. And that's a really big one in this day and age because cell phones are in every single person's hand, right? And if you're a little kid and, and your mom's on her cell phone and she's on it and on it and on it and you're like, hey, mom, I'm gonna, hold on, hold on, just give me a minute. You know, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The kid's like, wait a minute. Why is the phone more important than I am? 
you know, and, and even sometimes it's serious, you know, I've done this to you, you've been on your cell phone and we're like doing something and I'm like, hey babe, and you're like on your phone and you've done it to me as well. And it gives you this feeling like, oh, wait a minute, is that device more important than we are? So that's a really big one to watch, you know? Um, and also like if you're always constantly saying, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, you know, if, if your child wants to say something to you and you're constantly like, I don't have time for that, mm, that can be a really big one that can impact your child and that has impacted so many of us in our lives feeling that we are not important. Number four, what makes me good enough is achieving things. Ha! <laughs> huh. The workaholic, the perfectionist, always impressing others. My gosh, I, it's funny because I can relate to each one of these in different ways in my life. But if you are someone who is a workaholic, who's a perfectionist, then you might think that what makes you good enough is your achievements. And the thing is, is that what matters is you. <laughs> you are what matters, not what you do. And when you leave this earth and you have all the companies and the money and the cars and the this and the that, but you aren't feeling good, all that shit is not gonna matter. What matters is you, not what you do. That's a big one. And the last one is, what makes me good enough is having other people think well of me. Mm. I feel like that one is one of the biggest things in the world right now, and that's one that I've struggled with so much, is really looking for others' validation, really looking um, to see what other people think instead of speaking my truth from my heart and letting myself just shine. And that is one that right now I am just breaking through because <laughs> what really matters is doing what makes you happy, doing what makes your heart sing, living out loud, and really not caring about what other people think but caring about what you think. And you know, there's so many social media, uh, what are the celebrities right now? And these people are so, so many of them, not all of them, are very insecure because all they do every day is put posts out and try to seek validation from others. And that validation from others doesn't matter if you don't truly love yourself. It really doesn't matter. Because if you don't love you, nothing anyone else is going to say or do will matter because you don't truly love and care about yourself. These five most limiting beliefs really shook me up because, again, I can relate to each one of these and see how these five beliefs have affected me in my life. And it just it blew my mind. Siri, do you want to jump in and say anything about this? <clears throat> yeah, you know, that last one that you just mentioned, um, seeking validation from others, <clears throat> that's, I think that's one of my biggest <clears throat> areas that has maybe been a kryptonite for me. Um, you know, as a little kid, I always wanted to be the good boy, the good son, talked well about by others. And uh, never wanted to ruffle feathers or piss anyone off or say anything that would make anyone else feel uncomfortable. And you know, there there's benefits to that. You know, because being loved and being validated by others is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. In fact, it, it can bring satisfaction. However, if that's the only way you are comparing yourself or, or judging yourself or filling yourself up is by others validation it will ultimately leave a hole and what really affected me um, hearing you say that it reminded me of how um, by seeking others validations and not wanting to ruffle feathers I never really used my voice to speak my truth um, I always was um, subservient I would um, kind of let others run over me a little bit 
in hopes that I would still just be liked. And that was actually a fear of mine is that, you know, when I wasn't around, people would talk badly of me or say bad things because I would hear other people do it about others. And I would be like, oh, no, I don't want them to say bad things about me when I'm not around. And so therefore, I wouldn't use my voice. I wouldn't speak my truth. And um, ultimately, I hold those things inside. And when you hold those inside, it just it creates a, a dysfunction and a disharmony within your body because you're acting one way, but you're not being and living and speaking your true authentic self. And it doesn't need, mean that you need to be an asshole or you need to be rude or say things um, in a mean manner. It just means that you need to lovingly speak how you feel and what's on your mind, regardless of how the other person receives it. You know, that's up to them, how they receive it. It's not up to you. And sometimes you are going to piss people off. Sometimes you're going to strike a chord. But it's possible that in speaking your truth and in striking a chord for others, it gives them the opportunity to look within and to see why. Why yeah. does that strike a chord? Why is that a vulnerable spot for me? And <clears throat> so a big thing for me now is learning to speak my truth, even if, it's uncomfortable, even in times where it may create a conflict or you know, even a fight, a potential fight. And so <clears throat> you know, another thing about these limiting beliefs is oftentimes we don't even realize that we have them. Mm. They're like these little programs that were embedded deep within our psychology, our psyche, um, from when we we're early, young, yes. you know, sometimes they're even passed down generationally. Exactly. We know that um, through genetics and epigenetics, we take on these traits from our parents because of they needed to survive in their lives. And that's something that they um, created um, in their epigenetics. And then that gets passed on as a mechanism by which uh, we can sort of survive. But we're not here to just survive anymore. We have everything we need. We have water, we have food, and I know not everybody has this, not everybody has a home, um, but we live in one of the best times to be alive. It's also one of the craziest times to be alive. Um, but these programs can run subconsciously and you don't even know they're happening. Yes. Yet because they're running in the background, we're not living our fullest potential and we're not doing the things that we need to do. And ultimately, it holds us back, it creates blocks. And we are here to help shift that to illuminate these areas and really first and foremost for ourselves yes we're doing this work so that we can be the better versions of ourselves yes and then the things that shift us we share with you guys so it can help all of us be those better versions and really live our true full optimistic lives so um you know listen again maybe maybe what you can do is just list those again yeah and then people can kind of feel into any of them, maybe all of them, maybe it's one of them that really rang to them. And then listen to this again. Go um, look up, what's her name? Uh, her name is Shelly Lefko, and I'm actually going to post the podcast, um, and I'll update uh, this, this live stream when we're done, and I'll post the podcast and her website, which is Parenting the Lefko Way, um, so that you can all take a look at this, because just like Siri was saying, these are things that get passed down through generations. And I, again, I'm not a parent and I'm no way here telling you how to parent, but I want more than anything for all of us to rise up together to be the best versions of ourselves. And it's so important. I mean, who gave, if you are a parent, who gave you, who gave us a guidebook? As a human being, who gave us a guidebook to live? No one. We don't have that guidebook. So that's why it's so important to really look at ourselves so that we have the opportunity to break these chains so that the new beings of the world, these little beautiful beings, can rise up and really shine. And so, um, yeah, her name is Shelly Lefko, S-H-E-L-L-Y, last name L-E-F-K-O-E, -E, and she wrote Parenting the Lefko Way. And these are the five most limiting beliefs that we can have and how they can hold us back. So I'm just going to read them again, and then you, you can think about these as we, as we do some breath work, as we do some yoga. And don't, you know, 
the thing is, is that we have the ability to change as human beings. And sometimes changing takes a little while. Sometimes you can hear one thing and the change happens so damn quickly. And we believe in you so much. I believe in you because I've made changes that I did never, ever think were possible. And I'll tell you, if I can do it, I think you can too. So the five most limiting beliefs. Number one, I am not good enough. Number two, I am powerless. Number three, I am not important. Number four, what makes me good enough is achieving things. Mm. Whew, yeah. And number five, what makes me good enough is having other people think well of me. I just want to say to you all, <laughs> you are magical you are enough you just you sitting right there listening to this transmission on your mat if you're crying if you're laughing if you're smiling if you're pissed whoever you are whatever your emotions are you are enough and we're so grateful to have you here i'm going to post this podcast in in the links and we can talk about it on our page um, you know, if you come to class, you know that we are always there for you. We're always here for you. We want to be tribe with you, community with you. So please reach out if any of these, you know, if there, whether it's a good reaction or a bad reaction, we want to hear them. We're not here to make everybody happy. We're here to make you think about your life so that you can shine, so that you can rise up and be the best version of yourself. So... With that being said, let's, uh, you have anything else you want to add? Not at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Good. Great job. Thank you. And, and by the way, this was the Vishen Lakiani podcast, the Mind Valley podcast. It came out today. I wasn't even going to listen to it because it had to do with parenting. And again, I'm not a, I'm not a mom, but I am an auntie of my beloved nieces and nephews who are the absolute freaking world to me and um, and again I believe that we have the responsibility to really be an example for all of the children right now um, so and for ourselves for our community but first and foremost fully loving ourselves and looking at things allows us to bring them to the light as Rumi says the wound is where the light comes in so we need to find those wounds and we need to open ourselves up to heal. Bella's over wagging. She's having a dream right now and her tail's just going. So she agrees. Yes. All right. So with that being said, we're going to jump into some beautiful breath work yoga and shifting our bodies, minds, and spirits so that we can feel good and go out and be, be in our power today. So sitting up nice and tall on your mat, pull the flesh out from underneath your thighs, sink your booty down, close your eyes, let the corners of your lips tilt upwards and together let's take a deep inhale. Hold at the top, squeeze that breath around a bit, sipping more breath through the mouth. And as you hold, I just want you to think about your intention for today's journey. Let it swell within you whenever you need to. Powerfully exhale all the breath out. And hold empty. Turn your palms open to the sky, open to receive. And I just want you to tell yourself, I love you. I am enough. Deep inhale. Let's open the mouth, fearlessly sigh it out. Oh. Ah. Shake the shoulders, elbows, head, hands. Make a little noise. Shake off the morning. Good. Inhale, reach your hands up to the sky. Stretch. Exhale, palms come together and slowly come down to the center of the chest. Good. And with an inhale, 
Rub the palms, fingers, knuckles, create some friction, stimulate the thousands of nerve endings in the hands. And exhale, coming back to stillness, except for the breath, this sacred medicine filling you every moment of the day since the moment you were born. Every exhale bringing you into this moment, every inhale bringing in peace, calm, love, support, anything it is that you need, breathing it in right here, right now. And letting everything else but this moment, this transmission and giving back to the most important person in your life, let that be your focus. Bow your chin to your chest, hands placed down on the ground, open wide. Gracias Pachamama, thank you so, so much for every single thing that you provide for us every day, every moment of the day, all of your elements supporting us daily on this journey. We bow to you and we thank you from our hearts and souls for all you give. We are sorry that we have polluted the earth, that we have cause so much damage and all of us make a pact to give back to you every day even if it's in the smallest way know that whatever you're doing matters so with your head bowed thanking this beautiful planet that we live on send you a prayer of love and gratitude placing your left hand in the center of the chest and your right hand on top holding the sacred temple that is your body. As you breathe, thinking about your journey, everything that it's taken to get you to this point where you step up and give back to yourself. You do this work, you are awakening and you cannot go back to sleep. You have made a promise to yourself to do this work and to give back to you and you are such a gift. So acknowledging yourself also, I'd like you to acknowledge your health. Thank your body for being healthy and for its ability to heal and shift and awaken. And holding yourself so lovingly. Tell yourself, I love you. And really think about what you put into your body today in every single way, what you eat, what you watch, who you surround yourself with, all of it. What do you choose to put in your body today? Holding yourself, send yourself a deep prayer of love and gratitude. Beautiful. Inhale, sit tall. Sigh it out. Ah. Place your hands on your elbows. Shoulders. Shoulders. <laughs> Inhale, pull the elbows together, and roll them back as you exhale. Inhale, pull them up.
flexible you are. Just do your best. Fingers, knuckles, getting everything. 
get ready for breath work. And I'm going to sit back up, but you will be laying down to do this breath work. Thank you so much, everyone, for breathing here. <sighs> All right, you guys, good job. And just like Kamala mentioned, this is a really good opportunity to come lying down on your back if you're just joining us. Um, of course, if you are driving in your car, please do not do this breath work right now. It is powerful. It can get you high. It can bring you into altered states. So please find a comfortable, quiet place where you can lie down and do this. We now have the beautiful pleasure and opportunity to share the Wim Hof breath with you guys. And we've practiced a lot of breath work throughout our time as yogis and here in this life. And we share this one because of how powerful and transformational it is in just a short few minutes. So what we're going to be doing is taking about 40 powerful breaths into the body through the mouth. As you exhale, it's a soft exhale. So we're trying to get more air in, soft exhale. Big breath in, soft exhale. We do it rhythmically, we do it together. It sounds like this. So go ahead and synchronize in right here. sensations flowing through you. This is energy swirling through the body. Let it happen. Open up your senses. Let go of any judgments about whether you may be doing this right or wrong. Just know that doing it is right. Good. 
good. Now we're going to jump into this breath for one more round. Because of how powerful it is, doing it multiple times really can allow us to go deeper and scratch not just the surface, but get into some of those nooks and crevices where we hold on to things, where energy gets stuck and trapped. So before we begin, let's take a nice big inhale. Exhale it all out. Ah. Round two, go deep. Here we go. Five, good. We're going to count for you guys. So really just focus on the breath. Focus on pulling it in and softly exhaling. Pull it in, softly exhaling. Good. Eleven, twelve, that's it. Sometimes doing breath work like this can really rattle things through the body. It can shift and dislodge those stuck areas or trapped energy. So really just open up. Let it happen. Let go of that self-deprecating voice in the head and just be in it fully good over halfway there. All right, we got 10 more. This is it. Be here, 
And this next exer exercise is a full body core workout. And we're going to be utilizing Breath of Fire. So if you know Breath of Fire, allow yourself to jump in right now. If you're new to the breath, we're going to do this. We're going to open the mouth, stick out the tongue, and begin to pump, uh, pant, just like a dog. Good. As you breathe like this, allow the navel to pump, 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 pump. Now, close the mouth and transfer the breath to the nose. Good, stay with this breath, stay with this rhythm. You're lying down on your back, and now what you're gonna do is pull the feet together, straighten the legs, point the toes away from you, keep the breath going, lift the head, the shoulders, and the arms off the ground, and stare down at the toes. Good, that's it, pump the navel. Now, for this next part, we're going to raise the feet six inches off the ground and keep the breath going. That's it. This is going to bring up a challenge, I know. Dive deeper into the breath. Good. That's it. 30 seconds. And in these last 10 seconds, let's see if we can all hold the head, the feet, the arms up. Good. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Stay in the pose. Inhale. Hold, squeeze, navel, root lock, and exhale. Woo. Ah. Take a deep inhale. Open the mouth, sigh it out, ah, and let it go. And now try to drop into the most comfortable, relaxed position here. Really letting go, surrender, release, regenerate, restore, revitalize. Great job, you guys. shifts in your body, your mind, your spirit. And one of the most powerful ways to rewire, reprogram is to let go of all judgment that you have against yourself, all resentment that you have against yourself. And one of the most beautiful gifts our teacher, our mentor, Miranda Barrett, gave us was the Hoka Ono Ono prayer, the Hawaiian prayer. And so we're going to do an exercise right now and incorporate that prayer into our Place your left hand in the center of your chest and your right hand on top, or you can place your hands on your shoulders, your choice. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn our body, we're going to inhale, turning to the left, exhale to the right, and it'll be a fluid movement, it looks like this. three times I love you three times I'm sorry three times please forgive me three times thank you three times I love you
Sitting in an easy pose makes you feel uncomfortable, and that's okay. We are working on pushing through things that make us feel uncomfortable and really using our breath to do that and being calm and peaceful in a place that makes us feel uncomfortable. And we encounter those every single day in our lives. So sitting cross-legged, or you can stack one foot in front of the other if your ankles are sore, that's fine. Place your left hand on your navel. Your right hand in Gyan Mudra, so you're going to touch your index finger and thumb and put your hands, place this right hand right on your knee. And breath of fire. If you don't know it, stick your tongue out of your mouth and begin to pant like a dog, focusing on the exhale. If you know it, jump right in. You'll notice that the in-breath comes naturally. You're just going to focus on that exhale, and when you're ready, close your mouth and transfer the breath to the nose. And ladies, if you're on the first three days of your menstrual cycle or first six weeks of pregnancy, please stick to long, deep breath. Here we go. Roll the eyes up and into that third eye point. Once you've locked in, both hands on your knees and be on the drop. Right 
writing, so picking this up one level, hands making a large V, fingertips into the palm of your hand, thumb shoot towards each other, eyes closed, roll up and in, and go. So we're going to round out this experience here with a meditation. But if you need to, let's go ahead and just stretch out our legs here for a moment. So I know we've been sitting for a little while. So stretch out the legs, bounce, and bounce the knees up and down. Maybe do some love taps down your thighs. Good. Massaging the tops of the thighs down to the knees. Flexing the feet, pointing the toes. Wrist, uh, curling the ankles and the feet, maybe stretching down towards the feet with the arms and the hands. And as you do all this, just some nice, long, deep breaths. And then when you're ready, just come back to a nice seated position. 
So find yourself coming into a cross-legged position, and if you need to, go ahead and put something underneath your sit bones, like a pillow or a bolster, to help you sit up a little taller. And what we're going to do is just find ourselves sitting here in this cross-legged position. Let your eyes close and bring your attention to your breath. And there's no way that you need to breathe specifically. Just bring your awareness to your breath. And if it feels good, you can slow the breath down a little more. And now, awareness of the breath is the first part of this meditation. And it's simple. You're focusing on the visceral feeling of this breath coming into your body through the nose. Maybe how it comes into your lungs, into your belly. Good. And now the second part of this meditation is you're going to notice when your mind begins to wander. And trust me, your mind will wander. That is its job. Its job is to calculate and crunch and think and go so when you notice that your mind begins to wander i want you to lovingly and kindly bring your attention back to your breath and that is the third part so the first part is focusing on the breath and try to stay in focus with the breath as long as you can and then when you find that your mind begins to wander about anything, food, about things you need to do later, about anything, it's just observing. Just observe. That's the second part. Observe that your mind has wandered from the focus of the breath. And then the third part is to lovingly come back to the breath. Bring the awareness, the attention, focus back to the breath. It's that simple. But I want you to do this with love. So don't be harsh on yourself. Don't think you're doing it wrong because your mind isn't clear. And you're not in this perfectly zen space. In fact, the beauty of this is observing when your mind wanders and then lovingly come back. And I want you to apply this practice into your life. So when you feel like you get out of focus, or you may not be doing the things that you think you should be doing, I want you to lovingly bring your focus back to whatever it is that you want to be doing. Good. Now, I want you to think of three things in your life that you're grateful for. Three things in the past 24 or 48 hours that you're grateful for. Maybe it's as simple as a meal that you ate. Maybe it's as big as a, a life transformation or a shift. But I want you to see those things. Visualize them. Pull in your senses. Was there a sound? Was there a taste? Was there a tactile sensation associated with this thing, these things? And now on your next inhale, I want you to bring this sensation of gratitude into your heart. And I want you to see it come into your heart as a beautiful, brilliant, glowing light. And every breath, you're bringing this light deeper and deeper into your body. You bring it so deep that your whole body is surrounded by light. This brilliant golden light feeling so much gratitude, so much love, so much joy, so much ecstasy. And now in this final part, I want you to bless yourself with any prayers that come to mind. Bless yourself with health, with love, with abundance, with service, with honor courage, bravery, whatever it is, just bless yourself. See it showering down from the heavens into the crown of your head, into your body, and also coming up through the earth, through the sit bones, into your body, and merging perfectly at the heart center. And now, take a deep inhale. 
fill up the body with this gratitude, this beautiful glowing light, these blessings. Hold at the top. Five, four, three, two, one. Now exhale the breath out. Clear, release, let go of anything that may be holding you back from allowing all of this into your life. One more deep inhale. And hold here at the top of the breath. Gently squeeze the navel, the root lock. Roll the eyes up and in. Press the tongue to the roof of the mouth. Hold perfectly in this stillness. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale the breath. And now I invite you to come rolling down onto your mat, on your back, and coming into the most comfortable position for you to receive this beautiful sound bath this short transmission where you get to relax and receive and let go. It's one of the most important parts of this experience. So find the most comfortable place for you to sit or lay down. Cover your eyes if you have something to do so. Take a nice big deep inhale. Hold this breath in at the top for five, four, three, two, one. Open the mouth, exhale the breath out. And relax.
Not everyone will be there for you. Not everyone will understand your tears, your pain, or your fears. Not everyone will be able to witness your vulnerability or stay when you lose your shit. Not everyone can handle your mess or what's causing you stress. Not everyone will believe how much it hurts or want to hear it. But those who love you and have bled, loved, and lost will, they'll circle around you like warm bees to a queen. They'll pray at your side through your tribulations. They won't turn away from your suffering or treat it like it's contagious because they know what you'll soon find out, that there's beauty in a breakdown, that there's awe before and after a storm, that what doesn't kill you will make you stronger, darling. I'm taking a nice, big, deep inhale. And softly exhale. And as you deepen your breath even more, letting the fingertips and toes begin to move and wiggle, bringing that up into the hands and the feet, the wrists and the ankles, gently stretching through the body, left and right, the legs, the arms, bring the hands and arms up and over the head and squeeze through the whole body. And then relaxing as you bring the knees up into the chest, hands on top of the knees, we begin to make circles in one direction. And then going in the opposite direction and then let the legs flow left and right, forward and back, up and down, twisting, turning, massaging, adjusting, aligning. Then when you're ready, wrap the arms tightly around the legs. Give yourself a giant hug. Tell yourself, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And then when you're ready, begin to rock yourself up and down on your spine, rocking up and down, up and down, doing this a handful of times until you rock yourself all the way up into a seated position here on your mat, doing your best to keep your eyes closed for these final moments of our class. Take the hands, rub them together, create some heat, some friction, and then bring the palms into the chest, thumbs touch in, hands in prayer position. And as we breathe here together, I'd like you to first and foremost, thank yourself for showing up, for doing the work, for being amazing, brilliant, unique, courageous, brave, full of love and able to be of service. And then let's thank this platform by which we're able to share these transmissions, whether it's YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're practicing today, let's go ahead and thank the room. We'll thank the spaceship, but thank wherever you are practicing for holding you in this space. And now I want you to share some of this good energy you've cultivated in class with your family, your friends, your loved ones. Just send it out in the form of a brilliant golden light. And then take this light and spread it all across this earth, literally, completely surrounding this planet and sending peace, love, joy, happiness, abundance, prosperity, and any other prayers you would like to send. And then lastly, we thank and honor our teachers, our mentors, those that have helped us along this journey, our ancestors. We are forever grateful, and without you, we would not be able to be here and do this right here in this moment. Satnam, Namaste, Satnam. Aho, Aho, blessed be. Hmm. And when you're ready, allowing the eyes to gently blink open with a soft gaze. And coming back into the space where you are right here right now with us and we just want to thank you so much from the depths of our being the bottoms of our hearts uh, for joining us on this transmission and whether you watched us today live 
or you're seeing this at a future time, it doesn't matter. We love you. We thank you. You're amazing. You're awesome. And really let these ripples unfold into your life. You know, it begins right now. You did the work on your map, but now you get to experience the ripples through your life. So be the light. Let it shine. We love you. Thank you so much, Kamala, for being such an amazing human and spirit and really sharing everything that's been shifting you with me and the community. And it's a blessing. So thank you. Thank you. you. You're welcome. Siri for just supporting my shine in my life and also just being such an inspiration yourself and turning me on to podcasts. Woo! Uh, I love you. I love you. Love too. you guys so much. So, so much. We'll have the link to that podcast in our update notes. And uh, remember, your beliefs are what form you, what shape you. So if you're a parent, really working on creating those beautiful beliefs for your children, if you're a grown-up human like us, or if you're a teen or whatever age you are, you can always shift and change and reprogram. Remember that. So. Cool. All right, you guys, go out, be the light. Please share this, leave a comment, let us know how this shifted you. We're going to upload this onto our YouTube page. Um, check out our podcast. It's called Yoga Galactica. You can find it on most podcast streaming services. We've got lots of classes, sound baths, our actual Galactic cast where we talk about things that are on our mind. And uh, tune in, reach out. We love to hear from you guys. Have a great day. Thank Mwah. you.